welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at fractional distillation. We've looked at crude oil as one of the three fossil fuels in a previous video. On its own, crude oil is not useful as a fuel. This is because it is a mixture of hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are compounds which are made of only two elements, carbon and hydrogen. Crude oil needs to be separated into different hydrocarbons before it can be used. The hydrocarbons differ in the length of their carbon chain. Fractional distillation is used to separate out this mixture of hydrocarbons. A fraction of hydrocarbons is a group of hydrocarbons with a given boiling point range. We use a fractional distillation column to separate out the different mixture of hydrocarbons. Crude oil is heated up in a furnace and is passed through this fractional distillation column where the temperature is hottest at the bottom and coldest at the top. At the top it's around 20 degrees Celsius and this is where we have the gas fraction boil off. Just below that it's hotter at 150 degrees where we get petrol. At 200 degrees we get kerosene and at 300 degrees we get diesel. At 370 degrees we get fuel oil and down at the bottom at 400 degrees we get paraffin and other waxes. As you go from the top of the column to the bottom of the column, the length of the carbon chains increases. Let's have a look at the properties of the different fractions. The melting point going from gas to paraffin increases. So we start with a low melting point up to a high melting point and we have the same trend for the boiling point. Flammability is a measure of how easy it is to set something on fire. You need to have something which is highly volatile to do this. So our fractions up at the top with a low boiling point are more flammable than those at the bottom. Viscosity is a measure of how thick your liquid is. This is based on how long your carbon chains are. So for the small carbon chain fractions, it has a low viscosity, whereas for the high carbon chain fractions, we have a high viscosity. As we said when we looked at the fractional distillation column, the number of carbons increases as you go from the top of the column to the bottom. Within the gas fraction range, you have one to four carbons. Within the petrol fraction range, you have 5 to 10 carbons. In the kerosene range, we have 10 to 16 carbons. Within the diesel range, there are 14 to 20, so these overlap. Within the fuel oil range, we have 20 to 71, to 70, sorry. And in the paraffin range, we have carbon chains of 70 plus. Pause the video now and work out which of these would have the higher boiling point. To have a high boiling point, we're looking for something which has lots of carbons. That would mean that this one here would have the higher boiling point of the two. Pause the video now and work out which carbon will be least viscous. Remember, viscous means how thick the liquid is. High viscosity means that you have lots of carbons in your carbon chain. So to be least viscous, you need to have a few carbons. So that will be this molecule. Pause 
Pause the video now and work out which hydrocarbon will be most flammable. Flammability is based on how volatile your compound is. The less carbons you have, the more volatile your compound is and therefore the more flammable it will be. This is a smaller hydrocarbon and therefore it will be more flammable. You've seen some pictures of the molecules which are found within the hydrocarbons within crude oil. These molecules are called alkenes. Alkenes are a subset of hydrocarbons. They are identified from the end of their name, which is always A-N-E. They always have carbon to carbon single bonds. We're going to have a look at the first eight of the alkane family. The first hydrocarbon in the alkane family is called methane. It has a formula of CH4 and if we're to draw it out we have one carbon surrounded by four hydrogens. The second member of the family with two carbons is called ethane and has a formula C2H6. When we draw this out, we're going to join the two carbons together first, and then we fill in around the carbons so that each carbon has four bonds. The third member of the family is propane with a formula of C3H8. Again, we're going to join our three carbons together first and then go around the edge of the carbons, filling in the hydrogens to make sure all carbons have four bonds. Number four is butane, which is C4H10. Then we have pentane, C5H12. Number six is hexane with a formula of C6H14. Number seven is heptane, C7H16. And then finally, octane, C8H18. Let's try some questions looking at the alkenes. 
Pause the video now and name these three alkanes. So this first alkane has four carbons. This means that this is butane. The part at the start of the name tells you how many carbons you have and the part at the end of the name tells you that you have an alkane. This next carbon has this next alkane has eight carbons. That means that it is octane. And this final alkane has two carbons, which is ethane. Pause the video now and try and name these alkanes based on their molecular formula. So the first alkane that we have has three carbons. This is called propane. The next one has five carbons. That tells us that we have pentane. And the final one has seven carbons. This is heptane. Pause the video now and try and draw these two alkanes. Methane is our first alkane with only one carbon. Carbon has a valency of four, so you need to make sure you have four lines coming out of the carbon. Hexane has six carbons. We join these together first and then fill in to make sure that all carbons have four lines. You should have 14 hydrogens at the end. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos and Miss Adams Chemistry on Instagram for flashcards. Bye for now.